Hey, it's Jay here. This video will show you how to mount fluorescent shop lights to standard light stands for use in photography and video work. So I had some shop lights and they never worked out really well because I didn't have any way of mounting them. And I saw some other videos online of people using them and I came up with a way for me to be able to mount these cheap lights that you can get at Lowe's, Home Depot, or any hardware store. Uh, and mount them onto a light stand and you can either do it vertically or horizontally that that was a big thing I wanted to be able to adjust how they were mounted on the light stand for different things that I was doing Obviously, you're going to need a shop light I personally use 48 inch shop lights that use two t12 bulbs But I have heard that t8 bulbs are better suited for video work You need to make sure that when you get the fluorescent light housings that you get ones that you can disassemble easily. I know uh, Walmart sells some, but you can't really take them apart. They're all snapped together plastic, and if you try to take it apart, you're gonna bust it. Whereas the ones that you can get at Home Depot and Lowe's actually have screws that you can unscrew everything and disassemble it. You're also going to need some hardware. I bought some conduit hangers and a few short bolts to attach the hangers to the light fixtures. I got three quarter inch conduit hangers because I used three quarter inch PVC and just used a T-joint with a couple pieces of PVC coming out of each of those ends and then a cap on one end and that makes it so once I mount the conduit hangers to the back of the lights and then snap in the PVC you can mount the lights either vertically or horizontally, which is super nice. It's really easy to do. Disassemble the light, making sure to pay attention so you know how to put it all back together. Then measure a mark where you'll drill the holes to put the bolts through. I put mine right in the middle because that just made the most sense to me. Put your bolts through the conduit hangers and through the holes you just drilled. The conduit hangers should be on the outside of the light fixture housing. On the inside, tighten them down with nuts. Now pop in your PVC mount. Once you have it positioned, put the bolts through the conduit holders and tighten that down enough that it won't slip, but not too much that you start crushing the PVC. If you start crushing the PVC into an oval shape, it may not fit over some of your light stands. I made sure that the power cord was on the end where the PVC opening was, so when I put it on the light stand, the cord is still near the ground. Reassemble your light, pop in some bulbs, and put it on your light stand. You can see it mounts easily vertically and horizontally. To keep it from swinging around, I use cheap clamps that I just always have on hand. This lets me rotate the light with the clamp really easily. One thing to note is that you should make sure your PVC will actually fit over your light stand before you go building this, and don't overdo it on the PVC glue. If you do have too much glue, you may need to scrape some away in order to get the stand to fit inside the PVC. Okay, so here's the real issue. Uh, with using fluorescent lights, you should be able to see like these bars either going up or down. I think they're probably going up about like this right now. And that has to do with the frame rate. So what, you've got to be really careful with uh, the frame rate with these because otherwise it looks super nasty and it's pretty much unusable unless like for whatever reason this is the look you're going for. So I'm going to go ahead and change my uh, shutter speed and it should change those lines until so at 125 it looks pretty good at 125 like I can move around and stuff and I don't get that weird flicker um, and then if I keep adjusting and get it much brighter I'm at f6.3 right now and ISO 1000 so Anyway, um, but yeah, so if you just know that that's a limitation of this is that you can get those weird uh, banding things, um, just know that that's a limitation and then you should be able to overcome that and just be extra cautious when it comes to that. Here you can see the completed lights on the stands. The idea is that you get soft, even light over a large area that's cheap and doesn't heat everything up. This can be nice for green screen, as I'll show you in a few seconds. You can also use them for some interesting catch lights in the eyes, or for adding reflections along the body of cars, or bottles, or other reflective surfaces. The T12 ballasts are the biggest problem for the flickering banding issue, but you can go with T8 or T5 shop lights, and I think you'll have better results. 
This next shot is the same shot I've been using throughout the whole video, but I've keyed out the background. So it's just using the two lights and that is it. Um, if you use the lights to just light the green screen and light yourself separately, you'll get much better results. Uh, it's just great cheap lighting if you're on a budget and you just need something that spreads a lot of light that doesn't put out a lot of heat. Uh, this is a great way to do it. Yeah, it's not quite a Kino flow, but uh, it gets the job done. Just know its limitations.